Well, you know, we've had a very strong relationship for a very long time, multifaceted, defense, economic, and uh, last week I signed three agreements with the Secretary of State in the sense that you know, we signed two agreements and the third is a vision statement. Mm -hmm. And uh, really we are adding further structure to the relationship, having a strategic partnership dialogue mm -hmm. between the State Department and our Ministry of Foreign Affairs to really talk about the issues, how we see the world. And in addition, we also signed an agreement on third country training program. Mm -hmm. Singapore is a great believer in capacity development, yes. in where there is a capacity gap between countries. And uh, this agreement provides for U.S. to use uh, areas where it has uh, got the expertise to work with us to help train people in public administration in various countries. So it's great. Uh, I've had, you know, I've been almost a week here. Mm. I've met many people, Secretary Clinton, of course, yes. Deputy Secretary Bill Burns, uh, many senior congressmen and uh, members of the House, including uh, Senators Kerry, McCain, Lieberman. I met Senator IOT today. Mm. So very interesting week, uh, good exchange of views on Asia, on the world. I learned a lot as well. I asked about uh, what's going on in uh, the Middle East, the U.S. perspective. We've been a strong proponent of U.S. engagement in Asia for well over 40 years, long before it became fashionable to <laughs> yes. say so. And uh, we believe that the U.S. presence in uh, Asia has helped to keep the peace, regional stability, and helped us all progress, and has also been tremendously beneficial to the U.S. Mm. So, uh, you know, for a well, of course, when a U.S. Secretary of State wakes up in the morning, I say to people, which area of the world is not important, mm. right? Is it the Middle East? Is it Latin America? Is it uh, Africa? Every place is important. But in that context, uh, I think we welcome the fact that U.S. has always been engaged and has emphasized that it will continue to be engaged. And uh, my point is that in one should not only have a military focus on these issues. In fact, the engagement has got to be multifaceted and there's got to be economic engagement. So we talk about the TPP. Right. We talk about trade between countries. And uh, U.S. companies have tremendous opportunities in a very dynamic region with rich in resources. Well, you're doing well, but you can always do more. Mm. And, you know, that one of the points I will make is ASEAN, for example, has a project to really create an ASEAN connectivity mm. within a few years. And uh, that involves people-to-people -people connection, uh, social, cultural connection, you know, what's the meaning of being ASEAN, but it also involves physical connectivity, which means lots of infrastructure work. And there's going to be tremendous... Uh, economic potential, you're talking about a region of 600 million people yes. with a lot of resources and many countries are interested in the economic potential. There is no reason why the U.S. Uh, cannot have a greater presence and we encourage the U.S. to come in, have very serious trade and economic investment in the region. Well, you certainly see it in the media. I think uh, when I speak with the administration, the, they are very clear. Uh, there is no containment strategy. And I think containment strategy doesn't make any sense because it's just absolutely untenable to talk in terms of containing China. Even if you wanted to, you can't do it. This is a huge country which is on the move. It's economically uh, developing and it will continue to develop. And uh, China will set its own course. And I don't think it's realistic for anyone to talk about containing China. And I think uh, the American administration and American officials know that. Yes. And uh, I've got that clear message when I've spoken with them. And you know, if you look at the American uh, presence in the 60s and 70s, uh, even in the 80s, and then you compare it with the announcements that have been made now, yeah. I think the scale is very different. Exactly. And uh, 
uh, one doesn't think that these are the kind of assets with which uh, you would think in terms of a containment strategy. And anyway, I think everybody accepts that a containment strategy makes no real sense. Do the Chinese understand that? Well, I think uh, con from what I know, the administration has been having conversations with the Chinese. Mm. You see, while the administration is clear about it, some of the media reporting and some of the reporting in campaigns or you know speeches in campaigns do tend to give the impression of a or hop back to Cold War rhetoric. Mm -hmm. And that's not in US interests. Right. It's not in the interest of China, it's not in anybody's interest because once you put a frame of reference of a Cold War rhetoric, then China or its uh, people might also start thinking in terms of Cold War frames. Is that is that, is that good? So I think it's important that while the administration is clear, I think the message has got to go out more publicly and clearly as well.